Thank you for joining us for another episode of Talk Talks, sponsored by Photographer Entrepreneurs Association. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the association, go to photographerentrepreneur.com to learn more about photography business resources, templates, training, and support. We'll see you over there. All right, welcome everyone. We're back again with another exciting interview and we're here today with Ted, Ted Linzak. So welcome, Ted. Thank you so much for being here today. Hey guys, thank you for having me. Appreciate awesome. it. Yes, thank you. So um, let's tell um, our viewers a little bit about you and then we'll dive right into the questions. Um, so Ted, along with his wife, Rachel Linzak, are the owners and photographers of Linzak Photography and Nuvo Images. After meeting at Baldwin Wallace College, the couple got married in 2006 and quickly began their journey into the world of professional photography. Up to that point, Ted had studied business in college with no intention of beginning an artistic career. At the suggestion of following in her parents' footsteps, Rachel introduced Ted to the world of wedding photography, and the idea of starting a photography studio shortly blossomed after they married. Upon starting Linzak Photography in August 2006, they rapidly became one of the most sought-after photography studios in Northeast Ohio, and in 2012, expanded their market reach with the Nouveau Images brand in Charleston, South Carolina. Ted's style is glamorous and combines high fashion photography with photojournalism to display relationships and connections between his subjects. His instincts led him off the beaten path as he continuously challenges himself to not only stay current in the field of wedding photography, but also create new trends and set new precedents. Ted goal in education is to teach photographers the fundamentals of dynamic composition and lighting techniques, as well as captivating the, the decisive moment. His ultimate goal is to getting back photographers back in touch with the craft of impactful image making. So, sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. It sounds good when someone else says it, you know, especially. <laughs> Not, not to mention all the awards that you won. Oh my gosh, yes, uh, through, so many. <laughs> through, between WPPI, PPA, and you know, all the certifications you have as well. Um, you want to just, you, is there anything that we missed there that you just want to highlight a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you guys did a great job. Uh, because of Rachel, I have no Saturdays available left for the rest of my life. Um, so, <laughs> which, but yeah, if you're a wedding photographer, that's how it is. But yeah, you know, we got, you know, I always say we got started into it. In, in a way that a lot of people do, you know, not expecting to be a photographer, you know, and it was one of these things coming out of college, I thought I was going to be an accountant, you know, and I met Rachel and it was one of those things I was, I was going to an orchestra concert at, at the at the university, I was actually going to meet another girl that I had been talking to on social media, this thing called Facebook, you know, which no one had really heard of at the time. Um, and I ran into Rachel, you know, and it was like, we kind of had this whirlwind thing where um, we met in September of 05, we got engaged in December of 05, oh, and we got married. Yeah. In July, in July of 06. So I don't recommend that for everybody, but it was one of those things that once I met her, she kind of showed me um, what her parents were doing. Her mom had just a couple of years, she had been doing senior portraits and she started getting into weddings. And I had not even realized that wedding photography was this really incredible thing. I mean, again, this was 2005, 2006. Really, it was kind of starting to become more of this fashionable, artistic kind of thing. And all I ever thought was, wow, wedding photography is you know, you got three rolls of 36 and you got your shot list and you do all these boring things. That's what I thought it was. And once I saw that it was this beautiful artistic kind of uh, approach to it, I said, that's kind of cool. You know, that's interesting. And I, I was never a photographer, you know, I kind of had an artistic kind of flair. I love drawing and sketching and all that kind of stuff. But um, she said, Hey, do you want to try this? Like my parents do it part time. And, you know, we were young. I was just graduating. We were, you know, we got married really. Young. I was 22. Rach was 20. Um, so we thought, yeah, you know what, let's, let's give it a try. And, um, within about, I think about 10 months after we got married, um, we started doing it full time and we've been doing it full time since then. So, um, it's been one of those crazy things. Again, if you told me 10 years ago, you're going to be shooting weddings in 10 years, I probably would have laughed at you. So, oh my uh -huh. gosh, that's awesome. I can, I can totally relate in, in a sense that, uh, I went into weddings kicking and screaming almost cause I felt <laughs> similar to you that it was this fixed process. It was kind of like assembly plant vibe yep. and like doing something mundane over and over again. And then when I finally had that realization, like, wow, I can bring me into this and have yeah. a, a creative eye in a different direction. So that, that's, I think once you take ownership of it and you bring yourself into it, then Absolutely. you look at it totally differently. And it was, it was awesome. Cause I was always a big fan of cinema and you know, I, I love, you know, fashionable things. I mean, um, so it was great to see that, wow, you can actually combine that. And yeah. some of the first guys I looked at, I remember looking at um, your Vaughn, you know, the guys in Australia, Jerry, um, oh, yeah. I remember looking at that work and just being blown away 
you know, and, and we kind of talked about this a little bit before the podcast, but you look at some of those guys and you're like, wow, could I ever do that? Like, I don't know if I can do that, but <laughs> I, I saw that kind of work and I was just, I was floored. It was like, wow, this is incredible. This isn't just kind of going there and shooting some boring shots. This is putting your heart and soul into images that they go way beyond just a wedding image. I mean, it's a, it's an image for the couple. Yes, but it speaks to so much more. So that's what got me excited about it. That's, oh, that's, that's, awesome. that's great. That's great. So can you share with us um, a little bit about your expertise and maybe something about your business that not many people might know about? Yeah, absolutely. So me and Rachel, our main focus is weddings. We shoot anywhere from about 30 to 40 weddings a year. I always say over 40. I'm not sure if I really want to do that. That's about my limit. Um, we don't do as much portrait work, but we're beginning to veer in that direction. Uh, during the summer here in Charleston, we actually have a pretty decent clientele of um, people that come to the beach. They will, they'll get a rental with their family and they'll want portraits on the beach. So um, that kind of sounds like, yeah, it's whatever, but it's a huge um, profit center for us. And we've kind of we keep keep growing that and growing that. So we're doing a lot of that. So that keeps us busy during the summer in addition to weddings. But um, that, those are the biggest things, you know. Yeah. I mean, we, we do a little bit of senior portraits, but um, not as much. Maybe in the future, that's kind of on our short list of things to focus on. But um, weddings, beach portraits in the summer keep us really busy. Um, and you know, I do a lot of teaching too, a decent amount. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's in the PPA system mm -hmm. um, and that kind of thing. So that's, I, I love, you know, I, I try to share, like you guys do, I try to share what I've learned. Yeah. to get people back more so in touch with the craft of photography. Cause I feel like it's one of those things that a lot of photographers, you know, everyone wants to make money. Everyone wants to jump into it and have a business, but um, which is all good, but you got to learn those fundamental things because we are, we're in an image saturated industry, right? So there's images everywhere. There's Instagram and more than ever before. So how do you stand out? You know, and I, the first step I feel for photographers is learn your craft, you know, learn lighting and posing and composition, how to take an image that really stands above everything else. So, yeah. Love it. Love it's, it. It's amazing that I feel like the, the fundamentals are actually like the advanced techniques these days. Yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah. it's the mastery phase, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's actually going back where everybody's like skipping over. Like what you're saying is like the lighting, the posing, the composition. These are things that as a photographer, you technically, like I, I learned in, uh, I had a camera since I was seven years old and I, I took four years of it in high school and had a lot of work that traveled around exhibitions and everything. But back in the day in dark room, like you, you couldn't cheat and look at the back of the camera. So you, you had to like think through your, seriously creating the image and you know before you're you're clicking that shutter where i think that art you know has kind of been lost a little bit it's great that you are focused on bringing it you know full circle which is incredible and i would say our expertise more so you know and people ask like what kind of wedding photography do you do because there's so many different styles i mean i always describe ours as more of a very stylized feel mm -hmm. um which again isn't for everybody but you know, i always tell photographers you don't try to be everything to everybody you know mm -hmm. i mean that's a hard road to go down. I know some people really specialize. They specialize in like 40 different things, but um, <laughs> it's one of these things. That's, that's what I love. That's what excites me about photography is a really that stylized approach, you know, and if I, if I had to do it another way, I probably wouldn't be as enthused about it, but um, you talk about the craft and where that comes back to, you know, I love, we talk about our favorite photographers. Yeah. But you look back at, you know, Rembrandt and Caravaggio and these guys from hundred years, these painters that knew, arguably new light better than <laughs> us photographers who have oh, yeah. all these tools and it's so easy and you look at the back of the camera i mean rembrandt you know i read about him you know he would actually flag things in the in his window light in his studio to be able to take away light from certain parts of the body i mean crazy stuff that when you think about it is like wow those guys were incredible so you know that is my goal i try to look at that and with my wedding work in the stylized approach, especially, I'm trying to create really what I view as a portrait. I mean, not every image is like that, but when you create those really dynamic portraits of the couple, I think of it as like holding a paintbrush and putting each stroke and, and that's what I'm trying to attain. That's the, right. the end goal, which I don't know if I'm ever going to get there. But, you know, I look at those guys as my inspiration because it's like, that's what I want it to be about, the craft and right. creating an image piece by piece. That's where the satisfaction is for me. That's yeah. wonderful. And I think it's win-win because when, you, when you're that passionate about that type of detail, it automatically separates you from the crowd. Yeah. Because, you know, we, we just have a lot of people, the point of entry getting in photography these days is very, very low. You know, it's mm -hmm. holidays hit typically. Somebody's got a new DSLR or mirrorless these days, I guess. Yeah. And it's like they're, they're out photographing somebody, you know, maybe at a friend's wedding as a guest taking a couple snaps or whatever. And somebody's like, Hey, you should do this for a living. They're like, Oh, cool. <laughs> oh yeah, I will. You know, and, and some of us are actually accidental entrepreneurs where we, you know, we find ourselves all of a sudden business owners. But I think it is like what you said, coming back. And it's like, if you put a piece of you into that, like how you're describing, then you don't have to work as hard. 
because like you said, you, you were who you were motivated by originally and you're like, Oh my goodness, this is like works of art. This isn't just like everyday, you know, imagery, you know, you know, I, I jokingly say snap cause it's like, you don't think about it. You're just like snapping where this is like created mm -hmm. artwork yeah. and very well thought out. But, um, when you're in, do you, do you find that as you've been doing it more and more, it's just become part of you where you don't have to think about it as much? Cause I'm sure a lot of, you know, initially when you, when you see that incredible work, you know, from, from these masters, you're just like, Oh my goodness, this is so overwhelming. Cause today, you know, this is my you know third wedding that I ever photographed. I can never do, you know, limiting beliefs. Uh, that people have. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, there's an article, and I wish I can remember. I'm going to butcher the stages, but it was an article. I think it was on F-Stoppers, and it was talking about the creative um, timeline or cycles, like five stages of a photographer's creative journey. And yeah. I'm going to butcher them trying to say them, but that was probably the best article that I've seen. And if I can summarize, it just – it was kind of like at first you're just taking photos you don't realize you're bad and then then the second step is like you know you're bad but you don't know how to fix it mm -hmm. and then it's like you're getting better but you're still having to think about it consciously right. and then i think like the last step is that you're not really thinking about things and you're right. able to really create that, that's an excellent art i wish i could remember the exact yeah. step yeah. but I, yeah. I think like i think i'm at that stage you know i mean you get to a point and yeah, you never stop learning. I mean, it's one of these things that as good as you get, there's always something to refine or reinvent or learn or whatever. You never get to the end. But um, I, definitely knowing your lighting, knowing how to pose, knowing compositional elements, how to walk into a scene, find the most dynamic areas to shoot in. I mean, the more you shoot, that does become kind of, you don't think about it so much. But right. there's always still that challenge of, you know, you, you're trying to, you're trying to formulate that one shot and you have it in your head. And again, the more you shoot, it's easier to get it from your head to the actual image. Yes. But I, I still think there are times where I, you know, it's like, God, it's right there. And I just, you know, <laughs> I need to work with it. So I don't think you're ever done with that, but there, there are definite stages. There's definite stage. Again, that, that article, I can't talk good enough more about it because it's so great. It really outlines that process. Nice. It's, it sounds like uh, the, the natural learning cycle mm -hmm. uh, where you have unconscious incompetence, then you have conscious incompetence. Uh, so you don't know what you don't know. Then yep. you have an oh crap moment and you realize I don't know this. <laughs> and then you go through the, the conscious competence where you have to think about it, ABC, ABC. You have mm -hmm. to look at a checklist, you have to look at something and then you do it so much. The experience level, which you can never get from just watching things you have to do and then it gets internalized, which is that unconscious confidence. I think that's, that article is probably along the lines of, of that theory. Um, yeah. That system is what it sounds like. I haven't seen the F-Stoppers article, but it sounds like whoever wrote it went along the I'll lines that of, out. <laughs> yeah, that's the learning cycle. That's yeah. exactly that. And the thing I love about that is it puts the emphasis again on your knowledge and growing in knowledge. Because today we're so obsessed with gear and gear is great. You know, we all love gear, but you know, how many times have you heard, how many times have you heard yourself, even if you didn't say it out loud in your head, say, and if I only had that, I would be able to do this. That's what's holding me back. And you know, that's, that's just not true. I mean, to a point, of course, there's some help that can be had and being able to shoot low ISOs or, or whatever, high speed sync, there's things like that. Yeah. But right. most of the time it's, it's the lack of knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. it's not the gear, it's the lack of knowledge. So educating yourself and being serious about that, that is, that is the most important thing you can do. Absolutely. Excellent. Sure. Yeah. So through your journey, you've had a lot of experiences. Can you share with us maybe one of your biggest business challenges you've had and how you've overcome that? Yeah. So man, probably the biggest thing is, um, I was mentioning to you guys, you know, we started in Cleveland, Ohio. We had a studio there that we started in 2006. Um, I always say, if you guys could see my first website, it was ridiculous. I, mean, <laughs> I think I made it on like front page or what was that? There was some sort of software. It was ridiculous, but front page or home site. Like <laughs> yeah. So there was, a lot of, there was a lot of pink involved and there was big buttons and it was ridiculous. But of course, at the time, I thought, you know, unconscious confidence. I, th I thought it was incredible. You know? <laughs> um, but we started there in 06 and we stayed there till about 2012. Early 2012, I kind of had this idea and I guess it had always been simmering. But Rachel is from Charleston, South Carolina. And I'd always thought, you know, at some point it would be great to move. You know, I don't know how this is going to happen. And I think even a few years before that, we were kind of talking about it, but it just, you know, we just weren't in a position to do it. Um, but finally, early 2012, I said, hey, Rach, what do you think about moving down to Charleston? And of course, she was thrilled. You know, she's from a big family. She's the, she's the oldest of nine children. So she's got a lot of siblings. Um, all her family's down here. So she was, of course, thrilled. But um, talking about biggest challenges, you know, it was the idea of moving there was great. It was like, yeah, Charleston, no more snow. You know, I'm saying that, which is hilarious, because like a week ago, we had a snowstorm in Charleston. It's the first time in like a decade. Um, and we, we got about six inches of snow. It's no joke. It was a lot of snow. Um, <laughs> so I thought, no snow, you know, and, and no more cold weather and all this kind of thing. 
Uh, but that is extremely tough, you know, to be an entrepreneur to, you know, basically we were right out of college and we had, I always joke, I've never really had a real job. You know, this is all we've ever done. So when you work for yourself and you have your own business and all that moving, you know, 700 miles away, that, that is terrifying. You know, it was terrifying. Not only is it just terrifying in general, but just like buying a house, you know how difficult that is. I mean, mm. you know, the whole trying to prove your income and the fact that you're moving, there's so people don't realize how many hoops you have to go through. So, um, so that was tough. It was like, man, what are we going to do? You know, we have our, we've been quasi established in Cleveland. I mean, we're, we're chugging along, we're shooting weddings, you know, the phone's ringing, it's all good. And it's, it's terrifying to have to kind of leave that behind. So uh, that was the biggest thing. I mean, we, we decided we were going to move in early 2012. We ended up moving um, in November, um, and it was, you know, it was one of those things, you know, my number one thing was like, before we move, I want to make sure that we're already trying to make some inroads, you know? So again, for us, weddings are a main part of what we did. So, um, one of the biggest things I did that really helped, um, this kind of goes along with this, I guess, but, um, I wanted to reach out to some local planners. I thought, okay, we're wedding photographers. Where, where could be a direct source that could help us introduce us to some people? So I thought number one planners, number two venues, um, and what I did, and I think the total investment was maybe, I don't know, probably under a thousand bucks, but um, we researched about maybe about 10 or 12 planners in the Charleston area that we just kind of looked like their work seemed like they were well established. Um, I went, I think to White House Custom Color. We did an eight by 11 or eight by 10 magazine style book. Um, we put about 50 or 60 of some of our favorite images, you know, um, in the beginning, we put a little bio sheet, uh, we put a list of all our awards, just kind of show that we're established and all that kind of thing. And it was a cool little book to just say, hey, this is who we are, we're moving here. Um, and it wasn't, you know, high pressure, I think it was like, hey, we'd, we'd love to sit down with you, we'd love to work with you if you think you have brides that would gel with our style. And we actually put that book into like a gift basket, we made kind of our own little gift basket, put some chocolates and stuff like that. And we sent those, we made about 10 of those, and we sent 10 of those out. Um, and, you know, as, as it always is, you know, there's probably about five or six that, you know, we didn't hear from at all. Um, and then four or five actually did reply and say, hey, thanks so much for the basket. And there was about two or three of those that we actually formed a relationship. So before we even moved, we were talking to those people. And I can say those two planners gave us, I think it was like a dozen weddings our first oh my year. Gosh. Wow. Um, so it's like the investment, there's a little bit of investment. So maybe a thousand bucks, something like that. But um, that was crucial, you know, to be able to kind of get, <laughs> get our foot into the door and, and even with that, you know, it's, it's challenging, you know, it's like, what do you do? Everyone's looking for the silver bullet, but when you move to a new market, it's just, it's hard work. You know, you got to get your name in front of people that can make a difference for you. So planners with the venues, what I did is I reached out to a bunch of venues um, and I said, Hey, if we bring in um, a couple of our own to do like a shoot in the afternoon, we'd love to give you some promotional images. Mm -hmm it'd be a great way for us to just have images to make some blog posts and say, Hey, here's this venue. And, you know, just to get our SEO up and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was, that was crucial as well, but, um, that was huge. That was, I mean, I look back the last 15 years of my life. That was the biggest, scariest thing that we've done. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's still, it's still a process. We've been here for five years. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, we're, we're getting to the point, you know, at first we were traveling back a lot. We would shoot a lot of weddings in Ohio. So that first mm -hmm. two or three years, I mean, that's, it's a 10 hour drive. We drive all the time. And I mean, we, we put in the work, you know, it's, it's a lot easier when there's a big paycheck on the end, but we were doing a lot of that for the last couple of years. Um, and finally, probably the last maybe year and a half, two years, we're starting to get kind of more, more rooted down here, but it's a tough thing, right? Your first year, you get a call for a Cleveland wedding. It's like, do you say, well, no, don't take it. Cause we might get something right. here, but what if you do it's one of those things that again, no one ever tells you that side of, of having your own Absolutely. business. And stuff. It's like, you got to make those decisions because in the end you got to pay your mortgage and you got to pay and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that was fun. It was challenging, but I'm glad to be kind of on the other side of that now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's good to hear that you, you know, you're like everyone else. You go through the same thing of trying to reestablish yourself. You have to do the same. There's no one easy way to do it. It's just getting yourself out there. And I think when you went out and made those connections with those planners, I mean, that was brilliant just to, again, get your foot in the door and start talking to people and just let them know who you are and, and what you have to offer. Absolutely. Yep. We're all about the, uh, the longer the runway, the easier it is to take off. And so for you, which is, I think is important for a lot of people is we're, and I'm sure you see it with other photographers as well is at the 11th hour, everybody's doing this fire sale offer. Like, Hey, I'm booking this weekend. I'm booking tomorrow. I'm booking <laughs> yeah. next week or whatever. And a lot of people, like in your case, a lot of people, they relocate it. Some of them don't even think about, they, they start getting up and running after they made the move. Mm -hmm. And really what you did is you primed your engine. You came all the way back here and you're like, okay, let me, let me plant the seeds ahead of time so that by the time we do get there, like you said, you're already off and running. And, and, and to think about that, that there were people, there were photographers in the marketplace that you went to that could have had these same opportunities 
mm -hmm. that didn't do it. You were from outside of the area. And it reminds me a couple of years ago, we, we spoke at a conference in Pittsburgh. And what I did is I just did a test. I purposely created a very specific ad that I knew that would get results. And we pre-booked three wedding appointments in Pittsburgh, even though we weren't even from there. Yeah. So when I walked in today, the, the conference, I was like, look, I did this. It works. I, we're not even from here. Yeah. You know, and we were able to book three wedding consults. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's cool. Yeah. So it just, it's something that it is a methodology. So for, for you to do that to, and we're all about influencers. So instead of you looking at the public, because you would have had to advertise and win them over, over a long period of time, you went right to most likely the pain points of venues and wedding planners. And that was, they probably have local photographers that are just not giving them content and imagery that makes them look good. And you like resolve that pain point with a high end professional presentation right out the gate. Mm -hmm. Like you, you didn't come in to Charleston and like at this level, you came in already at the top. Yep. So, and those planners and those venues were willing to give that business and referral to anybody in a marketplace that would have raised their hand and said, I'm the one, I'm the one you should give it to. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so, I mean, I, I think that's great. You know, it, and it's something we're very big on that. Uh, we, you know, we ourselves, we peaked at over 50 weddings a year. Then we created a secondary team and they went out and did another grouping and then we were just managing people. So we got away from that because yeah. um, we kept growing. And, uh, but we're all about that as well. So if you focus on influencers that can get you, cause I'm sure even to this day, that initial thousand dollar investment that you made yeah. is probably still paying. You have to nurture the relationships. But I'm sure that got you the handshake, got you in the door face to face and probably even this now five years later, is still paying a dividends for you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of hard work in the end, just like anything else, you know. Everyone everyone likes to think that it's uh, it's just this easy kind of thing that gets you in there or even with work, you know. And I and as much as I hate to say it, you know, I've 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 won my share of awards. It's all good, but you know, brides honestly, there's a few maybe that are like, "Wow, that's kind of cool." most people don't care at all. So, I mean, as much as that sucks, I wish that wasn't the case. Yeah. Um, but that, that's just the truth of the matter. You know, it's like, you got to hit the ground running. You got to put in the work. Um, there's no, there's no easy route to success. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a true. lot of hard work. That's it's true. That's true. Now you've already shared some marketing strategies that you've done. Is there any other marketing, best marketing strategies that you would recommend um, someone to, to try out? Yeah, I mean, you know, big thing for us and nothing, nothing that we created ourselves, but a lot of people have been doing it, our same day slideshows. We do those um, at almost all of our weddings, you know, and um, I always say like, a lot of people do them on a small level. They'll bring a laptop, they'll put the laptop on the on the bar. There's nothing wrong with that, but we actually bring a 100 inch screen. We bring a projector. Um, we do a kind of a full show, either as like a multimedia show where everyone kind of pulls their chairs up and does that. Or sometimes we'll set it up on the big screen without music and we'll let it loop all night in the corner. Um, it's one of those things, again, um, a lot of times I hear it described like, oh, once you do that, everyone's going to be asking for your business card. And eh, it's not necessarily going to happen. But what happens is you have people, and this, is, this has been the case many times, you'll have a bride that, a future bride, she's not even seeing someone, but she'll remember the images. And this happens all the time. We'll get a call. You know what? I wasn't even engaged, but I remember seeing those images. And as soon as I got engaged, I had to call you guys. So it's one of those kind of long-term things. You do it at every wedding. You have a captive audience. And even though we're kind of in the age of, instant gratification and people people are still impressed by that even though we're seeing that everywhere they're still they're pretty impressed to be able to see 100 images from the wedding day on the wedding day displayed and again hand in hand with that goes being able to shoot really well in camera because oh, yeah. we don't photoshop we don't edit those you know everything is in camera we throw them up there um so that's a big part of it but man that that doesn't really cost you anything um, besides, you know, buying the initial gear and the screen and stuff. But after that, you get a rhythm, you get a flow with it, you put it together during dinner. Um, and again, it's one of those hustle things. Yeah, it's a little bit more work. Maybe if you shoot alone, maybe you got to hire someone else to maybe like, um, yeah, I don't know, just maybe download the cards or do some sort of part of it where you can just go in there and do it quick. But it is worth it because not a lot of people do it. And again, if you do it on a big, large scale, big screen, full size images, the impact of an image on a 100 inch screen versus a 15 inch laptop, it's just, you can't, it's like a 30 by 40 wall portrait versus an eight by 10, right? There's no comparison. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, that's Love awesome. That. Glad, glad you're saying we, we have so many parallels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really awesome. awesome. Yeah. Firsthand experience that and just seeing 
um, you know, the bride and groups, their face light up when they see the images and the tears just coming down. It's, it's so impactful when, when you do those, those same day slideshows. And then the guests are all like, oh my gosh, that happened just, you know, a couple minutes ago. Like it's, it's yeah, so cool. at least you're beating Uncle Bob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, it's like, no, it's still, you still see that though, right? That, that used to be the thing in the past. Like someone would always print like an eight by 10 and that still kind of happens, but it's kind of funny because someone will do it you know, the, the crappy cell phone image, they'll print it and it'll be there on the table, but then you'll do, you know, you'll do the slideshow and it looks like a freaking movie, you know, yep. and people just get like absolutely blown away. But Love um, that. I'll mention the other thing too is, is something that gets overlooked, but the way you communicate, I don't know, that's an overall kind of thing, but you know, Rachel isn't here with us, but Rachel, she is one of the most incredible communicators in terms of like, you sit down with her and you don't know her at all. And in 30 minutes, she's like your best friend. Um, I, I don't quite kind of have that a little bit. Not really. She has it in an incredible way. So, you know, getting brides on the phone for the first time, you know, not driving it towards just talking about prices and collections and all that, but she takes an interest in actually getting to know them. And that's, that's just sales 101. But I think a lot of people just don't realize that, you know, just getting being interested in people asking them questions about their day, questions about their hobbies. Um, so few people do that. And you know, the old adage goes, you, know, you like to buy people like to buy things from people that are like you, right. Mm -hmm. And we all like when people are interested in us and a bride is no different, actually, way more so right brides love it when people ask them about their wedding. So um, you know, we used to have a game or um, kind of like a trick that we used to do or when Rachel would get a call, she tried to keep someone on the phone for as long as they as she could just mm -hmm. asking questions because the longer they talk, and the longer that bond builds. The, the more you know, likely that that wedding is going to come through and that happens. Absolutely. So, um, and it's not just that, you know, Rachel's really good at it, but I think anyone could learn that, that aspect of, it. again, us as photographers are always just concerned about the images and selling the images. And we think people are just going to be floored by our shots. And again, I wish that was true, but it, it's more about the communication, taking a genuine interest in people, getting them to talk about themselves, ask questions about them, let them, let them tell you about their lives. You create that bond. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people that are not doing that. Mm -hmm. um, that is an incredible way to up your bookings. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great advice. We we jokingly quietly say in our in our members area, like when we, we talk about this type of topic, it's like, you know, we we count on our competitors not to take this time. You know, you know, as much as we try to educate and let everybody know, like on a local basis, you know, when we're when we're not because it's everybody's just so caught up in doing as minimalistic as possible. You know, you know, customer service, I feel, is like at an all-time low, you know, in our society across the board. Like everything's just really quick text messaging or, you know, like one, two sentences or phrases or now we're shortening words into acronyms, you know, and it's yeah. like this whole other language. And it's like you said, though, it's like, and, and this just comes from like an old school. Um, years ago when I had my real estate company, uh, I listened to Earl Nightingale, and he just has a concept that if you treat everybody on earth that you come in contact with as if they are the most important person on earth because to them they are yeah it'll resolve any problem that you have because you're yeah. just going to be that into other people that uh it'll just be infectious you know it'll Absolutely. come back so so it's great you guys do that because it's something that again you're newer to a marketplace you're, you're showing a difference like right out the gate you know you, you know and i think just the key thing that you that's in between what you said as well so many people just keep the conversation on the computer and I'm just amazed how many people do not even attempt to try to get people on the phone because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you have voice inflection, you have tonality, you know, you can instantly react and respond to, you know, because you could say something that you think is funny, you know, through a, a message you know, in text and people could take it wrong, you know, and it's like you don't have all these qualities. So it's great to hear you guys. On the it, phone, yeah, because yeah. we feel that's the best way to convert is to, to transition. Now, not everybody, the millennials and some, you know, they just really quick, they, they, they will not answer the phone and will immediately text you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you got to get them on the phone. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a challenge. You bring up a good point. It is a challenge. I mean, I think we've noticed that probably in the last three or four years, especially where it, it is a bit harder, but I'll still tell you what, when you can get those people on the phone, um, it's just a huge difference. You, you have such an incredible advantage talking to someone on the phone, just for all the reasons that you said. And I, yeah. I wish more people would realize that, but a lot of people, they, they don't want to. I think it's a scary thing for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But one of those things, if you're in this business, if you're looking to thrive and succeed and all that, you got to get past that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> true, absolutely. Yep. So for someone just starting out their photography business, what kind of advice would you give them? Yeah. 
I mean, a lot of what we've been saying, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of educating yourself. So, yeah. you know, I've, I get, you know, wedding photographers all the time. We'll get emails and can I shadow you? Can I do this? I'm looking to get into it. And I tell people, you know what, first of all, if you're going to do weddings, especially do not take any gig until you've at least second shot, I would say at least 15 to 20 weddings at mm -hmm. minimum, at minimum. Um, and educate yourself. You got to invest in your education too. And that's one of these things that, you know, we're in the age of a ton of free education, right? Facebook and YouTube. And there's a lot of great resources out there, but I still think that there's nothing like sitting in a class, mm -hmm. being with an instructor in a hands-on situation where you can ask questions and want to, I mean, think of any other industry. Is there any other industry where you cannot educate yourself, just get into it and start making money? I mean, maybe, maybe Bitcoin or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you bought Bitcoin last year, you're a billionaire, but yeah, right. every other industry, right? You have to go through some sort of schooling, some sort of education. I mean, whether it's, you know, four-year degree or whatever in photography you know maybe you don't need a four-year degree but you got to not be afraid to put some money to really learn again not only the craft but the business and and there's way too many people that just jump in they want to make money and we see it all the time i mean they in the end they end up hurting not only themselves but their industry you know because they kind of bring everybody down you know because you, you you don't realize that you know what charging a hundred dollars for a session and file is not, is not going to uh, be able to make you a sustainable business. And um, it's one of these things I always tell people, you know, there's nothing wrong with starting out part time. And a lot, a lot of people have a spouse that does something else. I'm not, I'm not shooting that down or anything, but I think a good exercise is that you should try to, at least for three months, try to live on your photography income for three months solely that. And maybe it's just a game that you play where you look at the numbers and you try to do a hypothetical. What if, and right. see where the numbers fall. Cause a lot of people, if they do that, man, they realize it's like, I, I'm like making minimum wage or less. Right. So you know, as much as we love the craft and photography and all that, in the end we have to make money. So we gotta be smart about that. And the only way to learn that is to educate yourself. So, you know, guys, don't be afraid. You know, all those people that are starting out, yeah. you gotta be careful. Cause there's a lot of people out there and I'll admit there's a lot of people that maybe shouldn't be teaching or, you know, it's like that in everything. Right. Yeah. So be careful, be smart, do your research, but, when you find someone that's an established person who's been around for a while, they have a good track record, they actually have a business, they work in the industry, you know, don't be afraid to invest some dollars in there and, and learn your stuff, you know, before you even try to jump into it. Um, Cause that is, that will solve so many heartaches, you know, yeah. versus jumping in. And I say that from the perspective of doing a lot of things right, but a lot of things wrong too. You know, I wish we spent more time educating ourselves, but, Still have to say in the course of 10 years, I mean, we've spent, I have no idea what, you know, 40, probably 30, $40,000 in, mm -hmm. in classes and workshops. Yeah. And some of them have been life-changing. Some of them have been not great, but that's, <laughs> yeah. that's just how it goes. You can't, yeah. you can't expect to not put any dollars into it and expect to just know everything um, or expect to what I feel from a lot of photographers, especially with, with weddings, you know, everyone wants to again, email you. They want to shadow you. They want to second shoot with you and, you know, I don't try to be the big bad wolf, but I say, listen, guys, um, I've spent over a decade learning all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I, have, I do a lot of teaching myself. I have no problem doing that. But you have to respect people that have taken the time to learn that and don't expect that someone is just going to give you everything you need to learn. Again, that, that sounds bad to a lot of people, but that, that's just that's the nature of it. You know, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I'd be willing to invest and I'd be willing to share anything as long as someone approaches it with, you know, hey, I'd love to mentor with you or something like that. And it's like, yeah, not a problem. But, you know, right. people spend a lot of time learning that stuff and not everyone's just ready to kind of divulge, you know, everything yeah. they've ever learned for nothing, you know? Yeah. So, so number one thing, don't be afraid to invest in your education. It's really important. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that, that journey never stops. Yeah. So it's something yeah. um, a friend of mine many years ago said, when you're green, you're growing. When you ripen, you die. <laughs> yeah. So once, once you think you know everything, the, the competition will start surpassing yeah. you. <laughs> so yeah, I keep learning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always say, you know, every time I teach, I go through these kind of three undeniable truths. And, and the last one is um, you always have to realize that there's someone better than you. You know what I'm saying? Because people get hung up on that and it stops growth. And I say it to myself, right? Because we all get in this trap with social media and blogs and right. It's so easy to look at someone and say, wow, that person is doing so good. And I wish I was there. And you got to just get past. It. I don't care what level you're at. There's someone out there probably doing it better, shooting better, having a better business, better marketing. You just got to focus on yourself and realize where you can grow. You take baby steps. Like you said, Paul, it's a never ending process. You're continuing mm -hmm. learning, but the quicker you get over everybody else, the quicker you can start actually working on yourself. Yeah, That's true. absolutely. Good, Excellent. Good, Excellent good. advice. So fun question. You kind of already answered it already, but I'm going to ask it again and see if you have a different answer. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> he lived through this. He already, he already lived through this. 
so, in a way you did pre answer. Exactly. It. If you had to re relocate to a new area today with no <laughs> clients and no one knew who you were and you had $1,000 in your business bank account, what would be the first thing that you would do to grow your business? Yeah, I think, you know, going back to what I said, reaching out to the people that can make a difference. So it's different for every kind of genre for weddings, you know, venues, planners, maybe other vendors. I mean, you think of the people that are the, the point people that brides go to first, you know, um, things like SEO. And it's one of these things that we've kind of haven't spent a ton of time on, but now in the last couple of years have kind of honed back on that. Um, and that's, that's one of those things, again, everyone's looking for a quick fix, but it's a, it's a long-term thing. It's a continuous thing that you keep doing, but, um, it, it's never one thing, right? There's no, I keep going back to that, but there's no silver bullet. Everyone wants to, everyone wants to lose 30 pounds in one week diet, right? We all want that. And like, when we see it, we want to believe it's true, but it never is true, right? It never is true because it's hard work and all that. And it's the same thing with photography. So, you know, it's multiple facets. It's SEO, it's your online marketing, it's getting in front of people that can make a difference, planner venues. Um, it's not just going to be one thing. You can't put all your eggs in one basket, but, um, yeah. And everything else I pretty much said. So yeah, yeah, it's, oh, yeah. I've lived it. I've lived it. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's great. It's good. But you know what? It's, what's great is that this is a standard question that we, we talk about because it sometimes it takes people um, that are watching this to see that we've all been through real challenges. We're all real people. We were talking about this before we jumped on, on the live, uh, the recorded part of this, but it's something that to know that you truly actually did live through it as well. For, for me, we're coming on the 10 year mark where, I had a multi-million dollar real estate company. I had, you know, over 200 people that worked for me. And in six, seven months, I was homeless in $3 million in debt and lost everything. And I had to reinvent it myself. Uh, and I didn't even have the thousand dollars to do anything with. And yeah. but it just, for, I think for people to know, we don't have to go through those extremes, but to know that no matter where you're at, like you lived through this, mm -hmm. you know, and you guys were able to, you know, to take things that were proven techniques, things that you knew that worked, and you were able to make an impact in a new marketplace going from nobody knowing who you were then in a very short period of time it's like instantly you were getting booked weddings where there's people in that marketplace that are crossing your fingers hoping and praying thinking that they built it so it should come but they're not doing anything proactive to go after it yep. they're sitting there waiting for it to happen um that you know the possibilities are there but it's a reflection the the, the world will give back what you put out to it Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so there's, there's a, there's a good balance there. So if you're sitting here giving nothing to the world and you're an introvert and you're staying at home and you're a hermit and you're not going to let anybody know about anything, then that's, that's where you're going to get back. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's great to see that you've gone through that journey, Absolutely. which is, I think is yeah. incredible. Yeah. So do you have anything that you do on a daily basis or a success ritual that, um, that you think that really contributes to, to your success? Yeah. You know, that's, that's a tough question. I was thinking about that one for a while and, <laughs> And honestly, I try to set aside time to do things that I enjoy. And I, I try to do that a decent amount. And, to, you know, it's interesting that the word success is so different for everyone, right? I mean, for some people, it's, um, it's shooting a thousand sessions a year and being constantly busy and people feed off of that. For others, and I would say more arguably for me, it's, you know, I want a business. I want the ability to be able to kind of have the lifestyle I want, but I also want enough free time to do the things that in the end really matter, you know, and for me at least, you know, so like I, I love to fly fish. I mean, anyone that knows me, follow me on Facebook. It's all you ever see, but I set aside a lot of time to do that because that's one of these things that, you know, when I'm there, that's, I love photography. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Yes. Yes. Rachel. I mean, I love it. I live and breathe it, but the things that really give joy to my soul and things that I really enjoy and let me relax and I can look around the world and say, this is probably what we're meant to be here to do you know, I want time for those things. I don't want to be constantly working. I don't want to be shooting a thousand sessions a year. Um, and it's one of these things, you know, people sometimes confuse too, you know, along the lines of being really busy, the word success with the word busy, you know, people think if I'm busy, that means I'm successful. Um, maybe, maybe it could mean that, but also it could just mean that you're busy, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I tell that sometimes all the time, we talk about in-person sales and people, it's like, well, you know, you could shoot one session and make $4,000 or you can shoot 500 sessions at a hundred dollars. Like, what would you rather do? So you got to be careful with those terms, but I setting aside a time to just relax and enjoy life for me, that's huge. And that's, that's really what re-energizes me and what lets me focus back on, on, on the business side of things and where I'm growing in my craft and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, me and Rachel, we take a, you know, we don't have kids yet. I mean, 
Um, so we like to travel, like day trips. I mean, we don't travel anywhere exotic, but, you know, going away for two or three days, I mean, those are the kind of things that we love to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we set aside time in the business to be able to do that. And th that's just important because if we're just working, we're just being chaotic. To me, it's, I would just self-destruct, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that, that time together spend is, it's so important. And, and, and I think that's, really wonderful to hear that you, that's the thing Paul and I do. We carve that time. We, we protect that time and yeah. set aside that time because if you don't have that, I mean, why are we doing all this and hustling and running around in the first place? Yeah. I mean, money, you know, money is great. We all need money, but <laughs> money is money. You know I mean? It's like people just get too crazy about it. You know, it's a, it's a fine line. We need it. We want to make it. We want to create a profit and have a sustainable business. Absolutely. But in the end, your loved ones, the things that you love to do, those are the important things. You know, we can, you can, can't lose sight of that because I, I think the people I do oftentimes have very miserable lives. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> 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 yeah. The things, the things I value most now were things that weren't even not on the radar like ten years ago when it was in a de different mental state. And it's interesting where the things that I value now fulfill us and fulfill me. And you can't put a price tag. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you, just, yeah. you just can't. Yeah. But maybe my twenty-year-old self would have not saw those things <laughs> significantly. Well, that's that's part of that's part of it, though, right? I mean, you grow, yeah, you, you get mature. older, you mature. I mean, it's just yeah. a different different <laughs> mindset, you know, as you as you get older. So that's true. Absolutely. <laughs> so, is there one business tool or resource that you have and you use and you can't live without? Yeah, maybe um, this is kind of a bigger thing, I guess. But like being part of PPA, so the Professional Retirees of America, that that's just made such a huge difference for us, you know, um, on, on multiple levels. I mean, number one, I always say, um, doing print competition. I mentioned a lot of brides, they may not care, blah, 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 but print competition. I look back in 10 or 15 years, like one thing that has really kind of elevated my growth as a photographer, I had, if I had to point to one thing, it would be print competition. And it's one of those things that I came into that thinking that I would never do that. And I didn't even really want to do it. I was one of those people that said, well, as long as people hire me, as long as I'm making money, it doesn't really matter. And it was one of the early on classes that I went to um, one of my mentors, um, Jerry Gionis, he, he sat down with me and he said, um, listen, Ted, you, sh you should enter. Like you should do this. Like you could compete on the international level. And I was like, international, no way, you know? Um, and you know, it was three years after that, that I ended up winning like the overall grand imaging award at PPA. And I don't say that to brag because honestly, no one cares about that. I mean, Rachel might and my parents don't, they didn't even know what that was when I told them. Um, so no one cares about it, but for me, it's like, wow, look at where I've come and look where mm -hmm. I can go. And every single competition for me is another opportunity to outdo myself. And, and sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't, but it's one of these things where you can almost put a measure on your growth as an artist. And it gives you an excuse to strive to get over the next plateau, you know, cause without that, some of us maybe are disciplined to do that. But a lot of times if you don't have like a deadline or something you're mm -hmm. shooting out for, you just don't learn those things, but print comic it teaches you lighting and it teaches you proper composition and why you should put a hand like this instead of that. And you, you just get soaked into it and you become a better photographer. And I really think it elevates the industry. So, you know, print competition within PPA is huge. I mean, just all the resources going to imaging, um, mm -hmm. being able to, you know, which is coming up next week, um, mm -hmm. being able to just get all this education for, for a very reasonable fee. I mean, we had some legal issues a couple of years ago where it was like, um, it was like four or five years ago. It's some, some client, it was, it was crazy. It was like, they got married and the guy was a con artist. And then there was this oh my crazy gosh. thing. Yeah. And the, the lady didn't know. And, and so we had a legal issue. So indemnification trust was awesome. You can call PPA. They kind of handled that for us. So, yeah. you know, for whatever, a couple hundred bucks a, a year, that organization is, um, it's just great to have on your side. So mm -hmm. I always recommend everyone, if you're a professional photographer, just join. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. it's we're not talking thousands and thousands of dollars. It's a minimal investment for just an incredible resource that'll help you personally grow as a photographer as well as help your business. So yeah, PPA is awesome. Yeah, I, I want to piggyback on the, um, you know, submitting for uh, print competitions. I think we see such a trend of photographers that they go out and do all this work just to get validation from people, anonymous people that they don't even know their <laughs> skill set or their background inside of a Facebook group. Yeah. And that's where they're getting their critique from. Yeah. And there's like no, there's no criteria that says if the people that are even giving the advice, even shoot photography, have any credibility behind them or anything at all. So I think, I think it is important. It does refine and help you focus on your craft. And like you said, it gives you different personal benchmarks that you can see your own journey and actually at least have a consistent methodology of how your work is judged yeah. versus 
Bob from Jabip that doesn't know anything <laughs> yeah. about photography is saying, oh, you should do that. And you're like, okay, this is just a troll and, you know, on a Facebook group. Uh, and, I'm all, and I'm always saddened that some, there's so many great pieces of work that people put together. And it's like they're, the lifespan of that image is just hidden inside of a Facebook group that today might have gotten 25 likes and then it's gone forever. You yeah. know, it, it doesn't make it past that that post, you know. Um, so you, it's just something that's great. Yeah. You bring you bring up a great point. I always you know, try to describe it to, to students and to friends and things like that. You know, we think of art or think of photography, especially we've kind of come into the to the realm of any photography is art, right? We have Instagram and everyone thinks that they're a photographer and it's all good. <laughs> Anyone can do photos. I have nothing wrong with that. But um, this idea that that any photo stacked up against any other photo, they're all the same and just whatever you see and that's what makes it beautiful. I tend to disagree with that. And the, the analogy that I kind of use is, is music, right? Music is an art form, just like photography, but it's funny how we view them differently. So I always tell people, if I were to like roll in a piano right here on this webinar or this podcast, and I would just start banging on the keys, and I asked you guys, is that music? Probably, you know, if we had a room of 100 people, probably 99% of people would say, no, that's not music. You're just banging, it's loud, they want to leave. Um, but what happens is metaphorically with photography, a lot of people are doing the same thing. We're banging the keys metaphorically, Yet people, a lot of people say, wow, that's beautiful. And here's a thousand likes and here's a hundred likes. And, you know, if you look at music, if you studied music, you know, even if you played the radio at some point, you probably know within music, there's so many different songs, right? Thousands, tens of thousands of songs of classical songs, pop songs, whatever. But there's a fundamental basis to all those songs, right? You learn your scales and your theory and there's um, different progressions that go together. And within that foundational kind of structure, we're able to create all these beautiful, unique things that all have their own heart and soul and everything, but it all comes back to the foundation. And I view photography the same exact way. You know, you learn how to pose and how to light and composition and the rule of thirds and uh, law of symmetry and all this kind of thing. You learn those things and it's not to restrict you to do, you know, just one kind of thing, but you learn those rules. And within those rules, we then create all these beautiful, amazing images. But any striking image, you break it down and it's like, wow, yeah, there's the lighting and there's the composition, and there's the posing. And, and so it, it's funny how with music, everyone agrees like, yeah, of course, you wouldn't bang on the keys or you wouldn't just get the guitar and start whacking the strings, you know? Everyone says that's not music, but with photography, it's funny how our culture kind of has said, oh, anything is art, but it's like, no, there's, it's the same kind of theory that's there, you know? So that's why I, I try to say that to make people think, because a lot of times I say they're like, oh yeah, you know, when people don't think about it, it's like, yeah, there is, there is a theory. So you learn that theory and then you create from that theory. <laughs> true, true. That's great. That's and great. I, think, I think that's going to be a, a, um, a discussion that we're going to have more and more <laughs> as time progresses because yeah. every single device we touch has a camera and has the ability of manipulating images to a certain level. And I think consumer-wise, it's, it's probably the number one thing that's kind of overtaken all of our lives. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So it's going to be a debate <laughs> that I think is going to go on forever, <laughs> you know, unfortunately. You know. <laughs> So last but not least, um, what are you working on now and how can people get in touch with you? Yeah. So, you know, of course we're shooting a lot of weddings and stuff. Um, you know, personally, I'm trying to do more personal projects. Um, that's one of those things if you guys follow, if anyone follows what I do in print competition, I've spent the last couple of years doing a lot of, um, portrait historically based portrait albums. So, um, my civil war album, 1863 was kind of my big winner from a few years ago. And I've done kind of an, a, an Americana Western album. And so I've been doing that for the past few years. I'm trying to continue that series. And I, I always tell people personal projects are huge. So if you're not doing them, take time to shoot for yourself because um, it can be frustrating, but it also can be freeing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I've got a lot of those things kind of on the docket. Um, again, if you guys want to follow me um, on, on Facebook or on the social webs and all that, um, you can check out our studio sites, which is nouveauimages.com. Um, you can also see lenzacphoto.com, which is there as well. Um, if you guys are on Facebook, I do have my own kind of small educational group on Facebook. So um, that is called From Commodity to Craft. So it's all about taking photography. A lot of people feel it's been a commodity and back to the craft status that it should belong to. So um, I post about three or five times a week there. We do behind the scenes videos and compositional breakdowns of images and a lot of craft centric kind of lessons about how to create images that are really striking and dynamic. So um, awesome. if you are a professional photographer, just search uh, from commodity to craft on Facebook and you can request to join there and you can check that out. Yeah, we can awesome. be in touch. Awesome. We'll have to check it out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> this has been so much fun. Yeah. I, I, we, I, I know everyone's really going to appreciate everything you talk 
talked about and just really seeing your journey. And I love how transparent you were about what you went through. I think that, again, that's what this is all about is just showing everyone that everyone has a different journey. And, you know, we all don't just arrive suddenly. We all have to go through the same steps and we just really appreciate you. You shared everything with everyone. Absolutely. Hey, I was um, happy to be on. Excellent. You guys had me on today. Yep. Excellent. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Talk Talks, sponsored by Photographer Entrepreneurs Association. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the association, go to photographerentrepreneur.com to learn more about photography business resources, templates, training, and support. We'll see you over there.